G'day. Here's another interesting little mathematical puzzle, and it involves a tennis tournament. So, let's call it the tennis tournament. Actually, call, let's call it a knockout. Now, I hope you know what a knockout competition is. It's a competition where uh, let's assume individuals are involved. Every time two individuals play each other, one of them will go on in the competition and one of them will be eliminated. That is, one will win and one will lose. So if we started with, with for example, six people, we might have three games played. So these two play, these two play and these two play. And for example, that person might win, that might win, and that one might win. These ones are lose and they are no longer playing. So after these three games, we have, as it happens, these, these three people go on, and two of them might play, and one of them might have to just wait it out. There'll be a winner and a loser, and then the winner will play this person, and eventually we end up with one winner overall. That's a knockout competition. Now, let me describe the situation and the puzzle. Imagine you've gone to university. I, I say this because we want lots of people. And you've joined a tennis club. You decide to popularise a club that you're going to have a public knockout competition. So you contact a number of local businesses and some of them provide some lovely prizes. You advertise and to your amazement, you might have been expecting 20, 30, 40 people, but let's imagine you've got uh, 187 people. Now, I just made that number up. It really doesn't matter, and when I get to the end, you'll understand why. If you have 187 people, the question is, how many tennis matches do you need to organise? Because you've got to find the tennis courts and schedule them, etc., etc. But how many tennis matches must you plan before you have one winner. Now what we do is this. Traditionally, <clears throat> we divide it by two because that'll be the number of matches. Now half of this, so I'll put here number of matches. Half of this will be 93. And there's going to be one person, because this is an odd number, there'll be one person who can't join in. And of these 93 people, there will be, uh, or 93 games, there will be 93 winners, plus this person makes 94 going on to the next round. Now, 94 people, if they're paired up, will make, halving that, 400 and, sorry, 47 people, or 47 matches at least. Those 47 matches will produce 47 winners. They will pair up to make 23 games with one person waiting. Those 23 winners will join with that one to make 24. There'll be, they'll make 12 games between them. 24 people make 12 games. Those 12 winners will play each other in six games. Those six winners will play each other in three games. These three people can't all play each other, but two will pair up and play one game and one person will wait and then the winner will play this person in one more game, and we would add that up. Now, before you do that, let me ask you a question. But this is what a question mathematicians ask. Is there a simpler way? I think you'll find that it's, it's moderately complicated. It's a fairly nice method, but you can see that with big numbers like 2,174, for example, this would take a while to do. Is there a shorter way? And yes, there is. I wonder if you saw the short method. The short method is this. Let's analyse a knockout competition, a knockout match. There's, they're the two players playing on the tennis court. You can see I'm not a great artist. 
What happens in one knockout tennis match? Well, one person wins, let's say it's this one, and one person loses. Now what we've done here is we've concentrated on the winners. Every time, these 93 winners join with this one to make 94. They play 47 matches, these 47 winners go on. But this is counting up all the winners. Question, what if we concentrated on the losers? Well, that's interesting. This is what mathematicians do. Sometimes they turn the problem entirely upside down. So for, for every tennis match, for every knockout tennis match, instead of thinking there is one winner, what we think is for every match there is one loser. That's not very much different in thinking, but look what it says. How many losers do I need before I'm left with one winner out of this? Well, the answer is, if there are 187 people and I want one person left, I've got to eliminate 186. And every match will eliminate one person. So I need 186 matches. Now, that's what we should get if we add these up. Let's check. 3 and 7 is 10. And 6 and 3 and 1 is 10. And I've got... 3 and 2 is 5, and 1 is 6, so I've got 26. Carry the 2. 3, 5, 5 four is 9, 9 and 9 is 18. Same answer. This one concentrates on the winners. This method concentrates on the losers. Which one do you like? Well, it's pretty easy to decide. I think this is wonderful insight. And there are some wonderful problems in mathematics that puzzled mathematicians for a while because they were using this kind of method until someone said, what if we turn it around and look at it in a different way? And come up with this. Now you can answer questions like this. What if there were 2,174 people? How many matches do you require? Well, instead of doing this now, you would simply say you need 2,173 matches. Just one less because every match will get rid of one person and we need to get rid of that many people before we have one winner. I hope you enjoy that. That's another insight into mathematical problem solving, this time with the principle of turning a problem upside down and looking at the other end. Thank you for watching.